Half a century ago, we took our first step on the surface of the moon. Today, there is renewed passion to explore for our next human endeavor. Mars, the red planet, further than any human has ever been. We face many challenges, remoteness, no livable atmosphere, high radiation, dust storms, and extremely low temperatures. Before any human set foot on Mars, we must first design a protective shelter. We will protect our astronauts from radiation with a thick 3D printed shell structure using Martian regolith, which works great in compression, but does not perform well under tension. To overcome this shortfall, we have chosen to construct the pressure retaining parts of the habitat from lightweight inflatable pods. They will be made out of high precision engineered composites that are prefabricated on Earth. Their elliptoid geometry will be able to mitigate the pressure differences whilst optimizing spatial planning. Mars X House is autonomously constructed using indigenous Martian materials to form a pioneering and durable habitat supporting future human missions to Mars. Enclosing an atmosphere of pressure in the near vacuum of Mars is a major design driver for our habitat. X-House takes advantage of the unique capabilities of 3D printing to provide maximum radiation protection from galactic cosmic rays, while celebrating human life through vital connections to natural light and the Martian landscape beyond. Independent and redundant mechanical zones isolate each laboratory from the living spaces in the event of an emergency. The benefits of ISRU regolith construction include radiation shielding and physical protection. Search's human-centered approach prioritizes safety, redundancy, and the well-being of the crew above the Martian surface. The mechanical core is a pre-integrated unit that simplifies integration of MEP and ECLSS systems, which would otherwise need to be robotically positioned and installed individually.
49 to go. Head trans looking at it at the hatch window. Welcome to the Zophorus Habitat. The Zophorus One mission set out to create a dwelling, a habitat inspired by biology and designed with an easily expandable modular footprint. Prior to construction, tremendous preparation is necessary for the astronauts' arrival. After the lander touches down, rover robots are deployed for regolith collection. Following optimal site selection, the lander seals to the ground to create a pressurized environment for printing, protecting the print process from the harsh Martian atmosphere. During rover material harvesting, Martian aggregate, ice, and minerals are collected, tested, and processed. Aggregate mixed with cement, derived from Martian carbonates and water, create concrete suitable for habitat construction. The lander then prepares for the printing phase. Beginning with HDPE, a highly recyclable thermoplastic, the nozzle prints slightly ahead of a second nozzle printing Martian concrete. This method provides the necessary support structure for the 3D print, which enables printing of highly sloped overhangs. The lander printer also contains robotic arms that maneuver to place prefabricated parts throughout the printing process. The shell of the habitat is composed of a structural outer shell and an airtight inner layer, much like a bicycle tire and tube. The thick and firm outer Martian concrete shell structurally confines and protects the thin and flexible inner layer of HDPE. Because Mars experiences tremendous daily temperature swings, Thermal cycling causes concrete to expand and contract, which ultimately leads to fractures in the concrete. To mitigate cracking, the outer surface of the habitat includes a solar-oriented HDPE shading system that shields portions of the concrete shell that are exposed to the longest duration of direct sunlight, significantly reducing the magnitude of thermal stress while minimizing material use. Additionally, the reflective shading layer is integrated into the thermoplastic reinforcement. This reinforcement is used in two different ways. First, the solid thermoplastic strands provide primary structural resistance. Then the secondary strands web inside the shell for binding. Through the main suit hatch is the communal unit. The hatch leads to an interior suit airlock to protect the EVA suits from the Martian environment. This unit is the largest space in the Zophorus habitat and is the primary hub that connects to the other modules. The communal module also serves as the dock for the Mars rover. The mezzanine level, with its natural lighting, expansive views, and surrounding vegetation, provides the crew with an ideal space for social interactions and remote operations control. The hydroponic gardens assist with oxygen production and CO2 absorption. In addition, the external translucent radiation shield can be activated to protect the crew during peak radiation exposure hours. The crew quarters contain four bedrooms for rest, leisure, and privacy. Each space contains storage for personal items, emergency pressure suits, and a viewport. The crew unit also contains a sanitation room equipped with plumbing facilities. The laboratory module provides a flexible space for studying Mars complete with work surfaces, computer stations, lab equipment, and communications technology. Electrical and plumbing systems are centrally located for easy routing. The lab also features a second rover lens to enable quick loading and unloading of field samples. The Zophorus habitat has the unique ability to grow with the demands of research and crew. The mobile printer is equipped to build and make repairs on site while also serving as a backup pressure vessel in case of an emergency. The Zophorus Habitat, building a new way forward for space exploration and human habitation. Welcome to the Mars Incubator. This habitat is created from in situ materials for efficient construction and provides a safe and robust environment for human life on Mars. It consists of four distinguished volumes separated into functional zones. The first volume is a vestibule for surface deployment via suits and rovers. 
The second and primary volume contains lab space, ECLS systems, a sanitation facility, a food prep area, and accommodations for crew members. The third volume is a flexible space for multiple activities, and the fourth volume is the biogeneration area designated for plant growth. All of these are connected with adjustable bridges that are welded into place. Before any volumes are placed, the external support structures are formed by adding successive layers of laser-melted basalt fiber in a fused deposition. Next, the lower panels of the habitat exterior are placed on the external supports. These panels are made from regolith and polyethylene and are reinforced with impact-resistant fibers. The properties of these materials allow for effective pressure retention and protection from impacts and radiation. This process allows for multiple configurations of the panels to be manufactured with the same process and equipment. With the lower panels in place, the internal components can be assembled on top. These parts are comprised of long fiber reinforced polyethylene, molded, cut, and thermoformed into the appropriate shapes using a heated press. This results in a rigid yet versatile material. The habitat is designed to be modular both inside and out to fit the needs of the facility. Once all the external panels have been placed, a tensioning device cinches the anchor points of the adjacent panels together. Let's take a look inside. In the vestibule, there are entry ports for both hatch and suit deployment. This volume was designed with standalone pressurization equipment to enable direct deployment to the surface. As with all secondary volumes, an emergency supply of pressurization gas is located below the floor in case of a primary system failure. Moving into the primary volume, to our left we have a sample processing area. This wet lab space can be used to conduct experimentation on the samples geologists collect. Behind us on the opposite side of the entrance is the dry lab, outfitted with computers and other analysis equipment. Ahead of us we enter the primary storage area with space for food and other items. The room over is the sanitation facility, where occupants can maintain personal hygiene. On the other side is a food prep area. Past that is a multi-purpose volume which can be arranged for communal dining, communication, recreation, and other activities. Progressing upstairs grants access to the biogeneration lab, where we can observe the first plants on Mars. It has extra MEPS capacity to sustain an independent hydrologic cycle for botanical life. At the top of the stairs, we find the crew accommodations and ample room for more storage. Back downstairs, we can take a look at perhaps the most important space. The heart of the habitat is the ECLS system housed on the bottom third of the primary volume. The space below the deck is divided into sections for each of the required operations. HVAC, water management, oxygen generation, and power distribution. The heating and cooling unit pushes air through the habitat and connects to a MEPS board, exposing a heat exchanger to the external environment. The water systems occupy the most space with a fresh water reservoir, a treatment system, and a waste containment volume. The oxygen generation system breathes CO2 and siphons water from the reservoir to produce oxygen for the crew and methane for fuel. Power for the habitat will be drawn from a kilopower insulation, connected through a MEPS unit and distributed throughout the volume. The Mars Incubator offers a modular design, efficient construction, and a viable living area for a productive and comfortable mission to Mars.